Happy Wednesday, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I am here to read your meditations for today, Wednesday, February 9th. It is gorgeous out today. I don't know where you guys are watching from, but I'm here in Connecticut and the weather is just so nice. And it prompted me to do a little makeup today. I know you guys are not used to seeing me with makeup and I am not used to putting on makeup. So I'm really hoping during this video, I don't do one of these <sighs> because we're getting a little upper lip sweat going on. We're getting a little head for forehead sweat and I got a lot of forehead. So a lot of sweat. Anyway, I'm going to shut up guys. I hope you all are feeling well, doing well. Let's get into our readings. I'm going to start off with our Just for Today by Narcotics Anonymous. If you have this book and you want to read along, I would love for you to do that with me. Take it out and let's go to page 41. And so the title of today's reading is Self Acceptance. From our earliest memories, many of us felt like we never belonged. No matter how big the gathering, we always felt apart from the crowd. We had a hard time fitting in. Deep down, we believed that if we really let others get to know us, they would reject us. Perhaps our addiction began to germinate in this, self, in this climate of self-centeredness. Many of us hid the pain of our alienation with the attitude of defiance. In effect, we told the world, you don't need me? Well, I don't need you either. I've got my drugs and I can take care of myself. The further our addiction progressed, the higher the walls we built around ourselves. Those walls begin to fall when we start finding acceptance from other recovering addicts. With this acceptance from others, we begin to learn the important principle of self-acceptance. And when we start to accept ourselves, we can allow others to take part in our lives without fear of rejection. Just for today, I am accepted in NA. I fit in. Today, it's safe to start letting others into my life. Okay, I think that's a really important reading for those people who kind of felt alienated um, by their peers or their friends or whoever. Um, I can't say that was like my story 100%. I can say that I felt that way in my family, kind of. Um, especially my dad's side. I was always the black sheep. I was always the troublemaker. I was always the one getting suspended from school, fighting with my mom, and things of that nature. I don't really blame that. Um, I don't see that that was a, a, what do you call it? Like, part of why I became addicted to drugs. I don't think so but a lot of things that happen to us when we're younger especially can show up later in life and it's, these are things that maybe we don't even recognize as being traumatic or a problem so I never really thought about that that's like a good thought-provoking reading maybe I could think about um my time you know in my family um <clears throat> And see if I could find any similarities or any, like, roads to my addiction. Um, I think that would be more true to people who maybe um, felt alienated in a, in a friend group or in their school setting or something of that nature. Um, thankfully, I never had that. I always was, you know fine at school made friends I never got bullied or anything like that thank God um so let me know down below what you guys think of that reading that's kind of a wishy-washy funny reading some readings really hit hard and I'm like wow that was so strong that was a great reading but something that doesn't hit hard for me might hit hard for you so let me know what you guys think about that reading let's move over now to our language of letting go by Melanie Beatty and we're going to turn to, sorry, I have all kinds of stuff falling out of this. February 9th, doo -doo -doo, page 38, letting go in love. Oh boy, I feel like this is going to be one of those hard hitters. Um, okay, so it gives a little 
couple sentences from her other book, Codependent No More, which I'm really interested in checking out and maybe ordering. So here's what that says. When people with a compulsive disorder do whatever it is they're compelled to do, they are not saying they don't love you. They are saying they don't love themselves. And that's from a little excerpt of her book, Codependent No More. So here's our reading for today, February 9th. Gentle people, gentle souls, go in love. Yes, at times we need to be firm and assertive. Those times when we change, when we acquire a new behavior, when we need to convince others and ourselves that we have rights. Those times are not permanent. We may need to get angry to make a decision or to set a boundary, but we can't afford to stay resentful. It is difficult to have compassion for one who is victimizing us, but once we've removed ourselves as victims, we can find compassion. Our path, our way is a gentle one, walked in love, love for self and love for others. Set boundaries, detach, take care of ourselves, and as quickly as possible, do those things in love. Today and wherever possible, or whenever possible, God, let me be gentle with myself and others. Help me find the balance between assertive action, taking in my own best interest, and love for others. Help me understand that at times those two ideas are one. Help me find the right path for me. Yeah, that can be extremely difficult. Um, <laughs> I think we all can relate to that and speak for ourselves and when we say you know at least anyway me let me speak for myself and I absolutely have had numerous friendships relationships like romantic relationships where um it was not in my best interest to stay with that person um but I did anyway it was hard for me to set boundaries because I couldn't separate the two um, and I wasted so many years of my life. Like I look back now and, you know, for a long time, I would get really depressed when I would think about how many years I wasted. Um, I'm going to be 40 years old in a couple of months. And I feel like just in the past year or two, I have finally started the work on myself to find who I truly am and how to love myself. And um, a lot of times I sit and, and, you know, beat myself up like, geez, I wish that I could have woke up years ago. Where would I be now in my life? And how I help that is telling myself that I needed all those experiences to get to the point where I'm at now. And somewhere in the future, there's going to be somebody who needs my guidance and my um, advice on a problem they're having. And maybe because of a shitty experience that I've had in my life, I have the knowledge to give them to overcome that. So tell yourself that, you know, your trials and tribulations are not in vain you went through them for a reason. It made you who you are today. And you're going to have all that knowledge and to be able to share that and give it away to somebody who really needs it in your future. So that's how I overcome that. Um, but yeah, setting boundaries and doing what's in your best interest can be extremely difficult when it comes to somebody that you love. So try not to be too hard on yourself, you know, just time will heal everything and have everything in order, hopefully. Um, let me know what you guys think about that reading down below. And if anybody needs to talk or needs some advice or they're going through something and they don't have anybody to talk to, hit me up. You can always, I'm always here to talk. Um, all right, guys, last, we're just going to throw in this little bonus reading from 365 Days of Kindness, and it's a little biblical reading, and it comes with a task uh, to take with you today, a task of like your act of kindness for the day. So let's see. M May those who sow in tears reap the shouts of joy, and that's Psalm 
chapter 126, verse 5. When was the last time you cried? Tears are an outward expression of the inward emotion you are feeling. It can be frustration that leads you to tears or relief on hearing good news. It can be broken heart or emphasizing with someone else's heartbreak. When we cry, we allow ourselves to feel the pain or even joy of the circumstances. It is a good, it's good to be real about what is going on. If you are on a painful journey right now or standing alongside someone's pain, hold on to the promise of this verse that those tears will one day turn to shouts of joy. Today's act of kindness is drop off a couple of Kleenex boxes at your local school. So guys, that is going to wrap up today's reading, meditation. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell so that you are uploaded on every time so that you are reminded every time I upload a video. And uh, yeah, guys, today's a good day for a good day. I'll see you here again tomorrow. Bye.